Hello dear friends, this is Yule Humphreys. I want to speak to you about a 10 minute message on the Word of God. <clears throat> I pray that it will bless, uh, that it will be a blessing to your heart. And I thank God that you're listening and may the hand of the Lord be upon you. I'm reading on the scriptures and I'm titled this little <clears throat> 10 minute message. I've titled it, uh, Pray the Promises and Live the Life. Pray the Promise and live the life of the Bible and of the Christian. The Bible says that some things that we need to know. Over in the, uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter, Jesus said, You've heard that it has been said and written that you, you shall not kill. But I say unto you, if you have anger without a cause against a brother, you are in danger of the judgment. And if you say, Raka, uh, you shall be in danger of the Sanhedrin. But if you say, Thou fool, you shall be in danger of hell. Now what he's saying here is this, that it's one thing to kill somebody. We know that's wrong. It's in the Bible that we should not kill. But again, Jesus went further and deeper. He said, If you have anger in your heart against somebody, you're hating that person. In a sense, you're, you're wishing that he was dead. And in a, in a sense, you're trying to kill him because you hate him. And that's wrong. You're in danger. When you do that, you're in danger of the judgment of God. But he said, if you say, thou, thou, uh, raka, that is, a person that's empty, you're just no good. You're in danger of the council of the Sanhedrin, even worse. But if you say, Thou fool, you're in danger of hell. In other words, when the word fool means you're condemning that person to hell without God. He's a fool. You're saying you are cursing that person and, and, and actually saying, I condemn you to hell. And it's <clears throat> another word that's used there that is too often used in our a language today and that's the words God damn. There are times when they are said they're saying that with those three words God damn you. What you're saying is God curse you and send you to hell. And when you say that and mean it, it means that you're not a Christian and that you're in danger of hell yourself. And so we need to see that importance of the words we use it indicates our heart's condition before God. The word itself is a symptom, but the root of the matter and the, of the sin is a fact that your heart's not right with God. I had him talking to a man several years ago, and uh, I was working close to him, and he would say, use the words of God to have this and that and that. And every once in a while he'd use those words. And I asked him one day, I said, oh, are you, uh, do, do you think you are Christian? Oh, he said, I think so, I think so. And why do you ask me that? Well, he said, i tell you why. I believe I know why you asked me that, because you've heard me use the words God lamb. I said, that's exactly right. Oh, he said, I want to tell you something, Humphreys. He said, I don't mean a thing by that. I don't mean a thing. It's just a habit. I just use that. And the Lord gave me a thought. And I said to him, friend, I ask you sometime, I'll ask you, I'll send my wife's, I've got to take my wife to the hospital. <coughs> my car's broke down. Could I borrow your car? And you say, yes. Go ahead and you give me the keys and I'll take off with your car. And I, I have a wreck and I I leave your car wrapped around a telephone post and I just go on. I don't call you or nothing. I just go right on about my business. A few days you call and say, hey, where's my car? And I said, it's over there wrapped around a telephone post. Oh, boy. And you say, what? But I say, listen, friend, I want to tell you something. I didn't mean a thing by that. <laughs> I didn't mean a thing by that. And then I said, it might not have meant anything to me, but it meant a lot to you because that was your car. And what you're doing, you're cursing with God's name. 
It might not mean anything to you because it's a habit, but it means something to him. That's his name that you're using in an abusive way. And so be careful. And be careful. Claim the promise. God forgives. God anoints. And then he teaches us how that we can forgive others. Amen. The Bible teaches over in the second Timothy in the second chapter, flee youthful lust. Do not go think about lust of the flesh. Uh, flee youthful lust. Put it behind you and think not about it. When you think thought comes up, turn it to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I'm looking to you. I'm trusting you. Follow after righteousness and peace and love and, and that which uh, concerns those who pray with you and for you. And so here's a, here's a way to where we live. We're to walk after peace and love and with those who pray and pray with them. It's so important that we learn to do that. Oh, we learn to do that when we read the Bible. The Bible is so good and important. It's the Word of God. Other books inform you of things, but the Bible transforms you. Other books can inform you, but the Bible transforms you. It changes you. And it's the only book that can do it. Trust the Word of God and believe in the Bible. Then there's a good word in the book of Psalms. In, uh, in the 69th Psalm, it says, O Lord, I will turn unto thee with all my heart, and I pray, God, that you will not hide thy face from me. I need you. Hide not thy face, Lord. I need you. And the Lord will not hide his face from you when you call upon him and ask him to help you. And look up and keep going. Keep going and be grateful and learn to smile and say, I'm going to face it because God's bigger than anything I have to face. I was talking to a little lady the other day in a rehab center. She's confined to bed right now. And she said to me, I, I, of course, I, uh, she's a Christian and uh, a member of uh, my church where I am attending. And she said, you know, a lady said to me the other day, she said, uh, oh, keep smiling because she said your smile helps to light me up. <laughs> and so she said, I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep smiling. I said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Claim His promise. Pray the promise and live the life that will please God. We need to do that because the Lord God is our strength and our song. He is our hope and our help forever. And whatever you're facing, you're going to get through it because God's going to bring you through it. And whatever problem is out there, it's because God has allowed it to teach us a lesson and it's a lesson we can learn from Him and go on and serve God. So believe in God and behold the Lord and find the way. Oh, claim the promise of God. He loves you very much. You're never alone. He's with you all the time. He's working everything for good. He's allowing you to bear a burden so that burden can become a blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. <clears throat> through it all, oh, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I have learned to depend upon His Word. Oh, I've had many sorrows. Oh, and I've had to wonder about tomorrows. Hey, and I've wondered in those times of of cons of. Uh, of consolation. God has been my consolation. And oh praise God. He taught me that all of these trials are to make me strong. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. I thank God for my mountains, and I thank Him for the valleys. I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. For if I didn't have a problem, I wouldn't know that He could solve them, nor would I know what faith in Christ could do. Oh, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, 
through it all, I have learned to depend upon His Word. Amen. If you haven't prayed and ask Him to forgive you, ask Him to come in your heart. Just ask Him to forgive you that you believe in Jesus. That you believe He died for you and paid for all your sins. Ask Him to come into your heart as the Lord of your life. And believe that He rose again. And you know that He's coming back. Believe, trust Him, ask Him to come into your life and you're saved forever. And find your good church and worship God. Through it all, you'll learn that He is the answer. Learn, O oh God, to pray the promise and live the life for Him. Amen and Amen.